match of his life. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Coming through, wanting to play the top stars, possibly your heroes and whatever. You might, you might be his hero, you don't know. But as you say, a tough order, a tall order, to say, for that man. But I'm sure he'll be excited with the prospect. Real champion, straight in there. Davis and Mark Allen also into a deciding frame. So the schedule a little behind. I, I think we might just pick up a little bit within the next two matches, Phil. That's just what I was going to say. <laughs> this one, of course, and, uh, and Judd Trump to follow. Some great viewing. The next couple of hours here, two or three hours. I really want to get this one out of the way as fast as we can. Just prepare for things ahead. Of course, there's always a bit of an advantage as well. With this three, these three day events in March, the first day come through. You've got that day before the final day on Sunday. Seven matches to go into our lives. As always, with Bonnie O'Sullivan, lots of enthusiastic fans trying to take photographs. The referee, Marcel Eckhart, admonishing them in German. It's not too clever, I don't know if I'm there, because he's, there he is. And uh, his left turn on him, which is ready to set the pocket. Well, oh, he's had one good chance. In this frame, Ronnie. He's got another one now to clinch it. We say that because these guys are that good that when they get into these positions, we expect them to finish the frame from these sort of uh, situations. Six. At the table, around the black spot, three or four reds open. And we're always surprised Seven. when they don't. Again, I think that was a little bit heavy. He's played on the one that is nearest to, but 14. this one to the corner is okay. Looks in the mood, Phil. Well, when he won the World Championship in May, I thought it was his greatest achievement. Hmm. He played one match all season in a very small event. Came to the Crucible. It looked as though he'd never been away, and his discipline was absolutely fantastic. Three. I think, to be honest, I think the others fell by the wayside a little bit in that tournament, and you know the semi-final between him and Judd, we were thinking, okay, the winner's going to come from this. Oh, that was in the corner. 
He had been playing a few matches. The question that Mark over Ronnie going into the World Championship was how match fit he was. You know the abilities are there, but you know sometimes when you're out of the, the scene or off the scene for a little while, everybody goes by you. We see that often in other sports, but he'd been playing a few exhibitions. He'd been playing challenge matches and what have you with various people around the country. But it's not like the intense stuff of a out there in the matches, but uh, every credit to him, the way he performed there at the Crucible. And we also would have said in that, if, all there was, if anybody could come back and do it, it would be him. Mm, I suppose you've got to put him, well, if not the favourite this weekend, and especially one of the favourites. 43. <laughs> Well, I think it's fair to say he's favourite for this frame. It's in the books, thank you very much. A total contrast in its speed to what we've seen so far here today. 51. Yeah, it's already done enough. I'm sure Ahmed is uh, very, very nervous. You know, he will be edgy, but uh, without doubt. I think he'll be looking to just make a good account of himself, though, in this match against the most gifted player we've ever seen in our game. Just about to say, are we going to see another century from Ronnie O'Sullivan? The answer to that is no, but with a break of 64, he wins the first frame comfortably, decisively, and without underlines, Mike Hallett, the growing international stature snooker has got. Yes, indeed. Uh, I've been out there, actually. Played a few exhibitions seven or eight years ago. There's a possibility that we might have an event there. didn't want the cannon into the blue. It's given Ronnie an immediate chance. And the one thing you have to do against Ronnie O'Sullivan is make sure your safety is good. Well, this red is on, but so is the black. And he chose to hold for the pink. If the pink spots, then he won't uh, cover this red near the black spot. I chose to go through them. Caught them well. And now I think this pink might have to go onto the black spot here. Yes, he was just hoping that something might just nudge that red away from the black spot. Didn't happen. And of course, now that the blue's out of position, this needs a, a good shot here to get down for one of the bought colours. No problem. Eight. I just wonder whether Ronnie might decide to go into the pack here. Stun off the side cushion. Oh, he's caught them again, but he's been a little bit unlucky this time. He might just be able to see this red well. near the top cushion. But the high value colours are out of position, so this is hard work to make anything from here. That's why he's playing the safety. They want to get this match out of the way as quickly as possible, uh, Phil, of course, but you'll give Ahmed uh, utmost respect. Yes, this was the last first round match of the day to begin. A number of second round matches are also in progress at the moment. Another loose one there for Mohamed. No, that's no good actually against this guy. You must make sure you, your safety is good. One. 
Yes, so far, Mike, safe by name, but not by nature. Well, he's going to get punished. That is for sure. Even when the high-value killers are out of position. If you've been with us all day, you might have heard David Hendon a little earlier on telling us that Mark Selby Tianpeng Fei was going to be our next match on this main table. Well, plans have changed now. Four. The defending champion here at the Paul Hunter Classic, Selby, is actually involved on an outside table at the moment. And I can tell you, he currently leads China's Tianpeng Fei by three frames to two. Looking to get the pink and black out. Oh, that's a good nudge. Well played. Yes, he's got the red to the middle. It's not easy, but he's got the pink and black in the open now. That was a very clever shot. I think he's got the angle here just to stun down for the pink. He's got options, actually. He's got one to both middle pockets. Missed it. Right just caught the near jaw. And he'll be annoyed with himself because if he'd have got that one, that was a good chance. And now the first opportunity for Safe to pot a ball. Get off the mark and feel as though in some ways involved in the match. to take those. If O'Sullivan does come through this, and one has to believe he will, Chris Wakelin, an Englishman, awaits him in the next round. Wakelin beat Daniel Ward 4-1 in round number one much earlier today. He looks very relaxed, tanned, and as you say, Mike, up for it. And not under a great amount of pressure in this particular contest, it would seem. No, the expectation is all on Ronnie's shoulders, of course. It's down to him, really. He, he knows that this young lad will probably be very, very nervous underneath. Understandable. It's all a great learning curve, though, when you're coming into the professional game. You know, it's just sort of hit it slightly. Great pot. into the middle of the table a little more Three. than he would have liked. Coming back for one of the bulk colours here, I think. Four. Just nudge into these four reds. Just well, it's okay. It wasn't as really as intended, but the pink goes on to the black spot. So he's able to take this red now. Well, oh. Oh, that's a little bit careless. Unlike him. 
Now, the eagle-eyed among you there might have noticed a little insect walking across the table. Right next to the cue ball is O'Sullivan played that shot. I just wonder whether, in his peripheral vision, it might have affected his concentration a little. So, although Safe hasn't potted a ball yet, he has scored a point. Four of them. I think the way he's playing is a reflection of the, the nerves he's feeling, not just up against Ronnie O'Sullivan, but also playing in front of a very big audience and on TV as well. A lot to get used to. One. And for him, this match will go by in a flash. Quite over the line yet here. A little bit of work to be done. <coughs> Play a cannon into the red here from the green. Well, he's thinking about it, trying to. I don't know if he's got the angle just to push the red towards the green pocket. Perhaps not. So it is the brown. Still needs a good positional shot here, though. It's only 45 the lead with 59 on. So uh, two or three balls needed to complete victory in the second frame. Now, has he come far enough? I'm not sure. Can he kick nice. this in with a bit of side? Or is it the safety? Oh, well, there you go. You'll have to wait then. <coughs> and for me, that was the key to his success at the Crucible. Didn't push out the boat. As I said before, I thought his disciplinary... or well, his discipline at the table was exemplary. Mm. I agree. And when he's in that mood, you're in trouble. Yes, because there's one opponent who's beaten O'Sullivan far more than anyone else, himself. When he wants it, he normally gets it. Yeah, and winning, we'll just go back to the Crucible, winning that fifth world title, Phil, there was a few years ago when he only was on three, we were thinking, well, that might, that might be the last one, but now he could target um, Stephen Hendry's seven. Who knows? I think it's unlikely, purely and simply because in December this year he's going to turn 38. But it's certainly not an impossibility. Well, I think he might get to Ray Reardon's and Steve Six. I'm sure there's another one in there somewhere, but we shall see in the coming seasons. Well, this is a chance. It's not easy. Ronnie was a little bit, a little bit concerned. The cue ball was just going towards that corner pocket. But I just wonder here if Ahmed can just chip this red in, get himself onto a colour. No, not interested. Just played the safety. But at this level, no, that's not good enough. He's given Ronnie the chance to pop this red into the centre. Not on this occasion. Played with safety in mind.
Well, a little tap on the table there from Ronnie, but he might be able to see this red to the centre pocket. <laughs> Just needs a colour. And he's on the pink. I think it's about to go 2-0. And just a reminder, if he required one, poor Ahmed Saif hasn't potted a ball yet. In terms of being on TV in front of a sizable crowd and against a big name opponent, Fifteen. this is turning into a baptism of fire. Fifteen. Let me quickly tell you that Mark Selby has beaten Tianpeng Fei 4-2. 21. Still online for a third consecutive Paul Hunter Classic title. 21 and the second. The first frame was very easy for Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ditto frame number two. In no time, he leads by two frames to nil from Kata making his way in professional snooker this his first season on the main tour armored safe and the golf and experienced has been well exposed thus far safe is yet to pot a ball apart from the white there it's all O'Sullivan Looking at this left hand red to hold for the black. Yeah. No problem. You know, Mark, in the preamble to this match. We showed a repeat of his magical 147 against Adam Duffy in this tournament two years back. And when he gets a sniff of a, a 147, suddenly the adrenaline begins to flow. No. Well, he's took the red in the corner, that's why he hasn't finished on the black too well. It's a good pot, and unfortunately, it's just gone away from the red slightly. He's got that red that's just left of the pack, but I'm not sure whether you can stay on the black with it, though. Whether you can just use that edge of the pack to keep position. Could drop it in with a bit of side, perhaps. Well, he's purposely played the stun into them. 17. And he's having to work hard for these, especially to stay on reds to stay on the black. Can use the pack here just to hold the white. Might be thinking about it already, Phil. I'm sure he is. Twenty-four. He's had eleven maximums in his career. Three at the Crucible Theatre. Twenty-five. Could this be his 12th? Well, it's the perfect pressure-free environment, isn't it? He might still be on this, actually. He was annoyed because he clipped the second red and he looked like he was going to be out of position, but I think he's on it. Oh, that's a result. That was a bit of a bonus. Take them while they're there. Forty-one. Well, he took the black in the Forty corner there. He's going to have to drive the white through reds, I think. No, he's OK. He's just chipped off one. Still got one loose red before he has to split them. Oh, 
Well, he went into them, but he's lost position. Well, he'll be annoyed with himself. The white just stuck. 56. Excuse me. Can he play the... It's touching. Can ball. he play the double? It's not far away, you know. Oh, wow. Amazing. I've <laughs> been our referee, Marcel Eckhart, was just... When Ronnie was in the throws, he was playing the shot, telling him it's a touching ball. I don't think Ronnie was too bothered about that. What a shot that was. Well, again, he's just a little bit short of pace. 64. <laughs> he's got another one to find here. He hasn't won the frame yet, but he'll be going for this. A slight wry smile. It's a bit of a stretch. Go on, get in. Great shot. And he wants that red to bounce. It's on, Phil. This would be amazing. As we've mentioned already, we made one two years ago here. Can he do it again? 73. When he originally came to the table, I was being a little flippant talking about a 147. I would have been inadvertently accurate. Well, the double to the middle was, was superb, wasn't it? And again, he's just a little bit short of pace. He's slightly the wrong side of this red. Playing this with a lot of check side. Well, he's having to play another one now. <laughs> I'll tell you, if he could play position, this lad, he's got potential, Phil. What do you reckon? Another thing cuts on the black. Can't keep going to the well, surely. He can, you know. He can. And look at that for a nudge on the middle bump as well. It's landed perfect on this red. Well, he's had to jump over a few hurdles in this break, but it's still on. After all of the blacks he's potted off the spot, trying to force an angle, he misses an elementary pot. Nevertheless, what entertainment from Ronnie O'Sullivan. He can always be relied upon to stir up the crowd. Armit safe, hasn't potted a ball yet. Ronnie O'Sullivan has sprinted into a 3 0 lead. Made a 1 4 7 break in the previous frame. 89 points on the board for him. Missed black off the spot because he was trying to obtain position on the next red. Generally speaking, he's playing some pretty good snooker. Breaks of 64 and 89 so far. Armit safe. He must have been looking forward to this match. Right now, it's turned into. More of an ordeal than a contest. I suppose you could say he's got the best seat in the house. That looks a little bit narrow. Oh, that's okay. Good shot. Well, a long way back now. Uh, this is a question of when and not if. And uh, Ronnie's aware that he's got two more matches today after this one. I didn't find him to miss that one. We just got the average frame time there. Nine minutes, 21 seconds. First ball potted then for Ahmed. There you go, 75 is against one. Uh, no one is getting around the ball, so why not? Needs a few more though. Green ball. Refusing the pink to the middle pocket in favour of green into the pack. 
split the reds, try and get the snooker in behind the yellow he was, didn't achieve it. The thought was there though. In this kind of situation there's always the cliche isn't there, he's gaining invaluable experience. But when you see something like this, you sometimes wonder whether a match of this nature does more harm than good. Yeah, I know what you're saying, Phil, but I think the thing is, as well, when I came into the professional ranks, it, it does take a little while to settle, isn't it? Uh, you get settled in. It's two or three years, really, just getting that early experience. But I think the thing is, as well, you have to take the knocks, don't you? You have to get the, the, uh, a few thumps on the chin before you come back even stronger. Everybody's done that. That's the nature of professional sport. That's not a bad shot, though. It's just a question of taking those knocks and coming back stronger. But uh, this lad will learn, whatever happens. Just a question of how he applies himself in the next couple of seasons, really. Yeah, that's a two-year exemption. He could escape from Ronnie, but he has left a pot on down the cushion here. Well, he's played well so far. He'll be happy with uh, the scoreline. Safer presented Qatar at the 2010 Asian Games. And he's been coached by Mike Russell, an 11 times world billiards champion, undoubtedly the finest billiards player of the modern era. A former coach, of course, over in Qatar of the national team, Rory McLeod, who plays on the circuit. Safe secured his place on the main tour through the qualifying school back in May. And he won five matches in that tournament. Beat the highly regarded Welsh amateur Dwayne Jones 4-3. Michael Giorgio 4-2 as well. Giorgio is a former main tour player also. And so he can clearly compete. But up against O'Sullivan in the full glare of the cameras on international TV. It's a big leap. And again, he just caught the blue on the way through. I don't think he's left Ronnie anything on here. We'll be seeing a safety from Ronnie. Wasn't quite sure if Ronnie had covered this red. It seems not. Unlucky. Doesn't want that cue ball in though, because that red is waiting. That's okay. I was telling you a while ago that some second round matches have begun. Sakib Benazir and Stuart Bingham. Well, 2 1 it is to Nazir at the moment, the amateur, so that's something of a surprise after Bingham won the opening frame. The Battle of the Davis is Mark against Steve. Mark Davis leads 2 0, then after Steve Davis beat Jamie Cope this morning. Alex Davis leads Stuart Carrington 2-1. And also in second round action, another O'Sullivan, Sean O'Sullivan, is 2-1 down to David Morris.
Well, he has left Ronnie this tempter to the green pocket. He could also take it to the centre, actually, but he knows he might be leaving things on. Well, there's the respect. He could have taken that on, but he chose not to. Uh, he might have left this red to the centre, actually, through the gap between the brown and the pink. He was hoping that white would travel a little bit further. But he's in good position. He won't be... Well, he's a perfectionist, Ronnie. We know that. He won't be happy with a safety shot because he would be looking at things further ahead. If he plays that shot against a, a, a Mark Selby or something like that, he will get punished. I'm not sure whether this guy's at the moment quite got the game to punish Ronnie. That's a good red. It would be good to see him put a few together, get something positive from the contest. Yeah, absolutely. you got though Phil in these sort of situations we keep saying when these lines come in and when they do settle down it's often a little bit too late isn't it the damage has been done then Tricky green to the centre if he takes it on. Omens aren't good. He's played 27 frames so far as a professional. And he's won only three of them. That is a seven. Safe was whitewashed in the first qualifying round of the Shanghai Masters by Ian Burns. Whitewashed. 4-0 by Michael White in the first qualifying round of the Indian Open. One. When you're on the professional tour, it is an extremely tough school. We've seen really good amateurs in the UK in that field, the, the super amateurs really, and they've gone into the professional ranks and have struggled, haven't they, the first couple of seasons. Oh. It's just a totally different level. Well, that's the way it should be, really. Don't think it's the, it's not the abilities, it's the mental factor. It's, uh, you know, suddenly in the amateur ranks you get a couple of frame, a couple of chances per frame, three, something like that. In the pro ranks you get probably one, two if you're lucky. Depends if the match is scrappy, of course, but really at top level when you're playing a guy like this, you don't get too many chances. You have to make sure you take them. Eleven. Yes, and over the years, playing in the amateur game, there have been certain individuals who look absolutely certain to make a big impact when they turn professional and they haven't others have been low-key as amateurs and done really well when they play for do well ronnie back in here this is about to go four nil 
And there's a little bit of work to be done. If the black spot is held here, that would help. It would go on to the pink spot. Yes, no problem. 22. I'm just going to a few shots here. That's okay. You could open these up and all of a sudden have a frame match winning opportunity. And uh, no disrespect to Ahmed, but if Ronnie does win this 4 0, Phil, I don't think Ronnie will take much out of this match. You know, he's got things ahead today and Sunday. This will be a little bit of a warm up for him. He knows that Ahmed would have been nervous coming into this match. He knows that. But. Um, He'll be thinking more about his game during this weekend and months ahead, of course. A long season ahead for these boys once more. But uh, he looks in good form, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Took that year out, of course, just to think about things. Wanted to come back with a little bit more enthusiasm. Everybody wanting to see him at the table on our screens once more no doubt that this guy is playing really well he's always the man to beat 37 I'm sure the likes of Mark Selby's hang on has he missed that oh. The John Higginses, the Sean Murphys, the Mark Williamses of this world will have something to say about 44. that this coming season. I'm sure they'll all be in the mix at the business end 45. of the tournament. Nice cannon. Just needs the red and black and Ahmed safe will be needing snookers. Fifth victory. Well, we did expect this a little, but you still have to produce the goods, and uh, I mean, could take away and say, well, I've played the best player that's ever been. And I hope he's enjoyed 60. it. 60. 61. O'Sullivan made a 64 break in the first frame. He put together a run of 89 in the third. Is it possible he could maybe finish with a century it's unlikely but with him don't discount it I'll hold you to that Phil when this red goes in no no I won't the concession arrives Ahmed safe is whitewashed and whitewashed decisively in much less than an hour Ronnie O'Sullivan through by a score of four frames to nil. That was the definition of convincing. Next up for him in round two, Chris Wakelin. Well, hope you enjoyed that. The action, of course, continues thick and fast here at Firth today in the Paul Hunter Classic. Next up, another very exciting player, Judd Trump against Graham Dot. That's a second round contest. Trump, a wonderful potter, a multiple tournament winner, up against the 2000.